ran. I said, not today, Susan. I don't know who you are. I don't know what happened to you. I don't know why you not rested in peace, but you will never see me again. This is my background music Cause I don't wanna get copyrighted So I made my own shit to this beat Kinda laying low key But join the team Subscribe, subscribe If it is blurry, I do apologize But what is good, you guys? So today's video, um, you know It's a spooky season, everyone's loving it I personally, I mean I like Halloween But I really love Christmas time Like after Halloween's over, like Christmas mode, I am in. I'm actually in Christmas mode right now. But anywho, this video is going to go with the theme of the season, spooky season. And uh, I'm going to just be telling you guys some of the encounters I had with demons. Were they demons though? I really don't know. I'm going to just get comfortable. Let me scoot a little closer. Should I scoot a little closer? So listen, I don't know if you believe in ghosts, but I believe in ghosts. And like... They're real. I feel like you shouldn't mess with or like summon any like demons or anything. Cause I feel like that really like messes with like your energy, honestly. But look, I live next door to this house that was haunted with this little girl. It was this little girl, she did die in the house. Um, I think she was killed by like her stepdad or something. Um, I think that was the um whole scenario that happened in the house i think the little girl was killed by her stepdad i lived there like two three years before i actually knew it was haunted because the people that used to live in the house before my best friend actually moved into the house we were friends with them it was like more so of my boy cousin's friends so i never went inside of the house um but you know my cousin and them did so they moved away or whatever we still live in our same house turns out my best friend mona she moved into the house next door we weren't friends when she moved in um that's how we actually met each other we lived right next door to each other and we were forced to be friends by our mom so but, um that's my best friend now we've been best friends for 10 years and she can literally her whole family can literally tell you that everything i'm saying is true like her house was Am I clear? Her house was haunted. All right, so look, I'm gonna just tell you guys some scenarios that happened to me in the house. Um, I'm not really gonna touch base on what happened to everybody that was in there that experienced this little girl. But I'm gonna get into the story of really why I stopped going to her house. Um, I haven't stepped foot in that house. Well, they moved now, we all moved, but I didn't step foot into that house after this happened. So let me just tell you, um, it's it was some things that happened that went on um, that we kind of joked around and said it was haunted. And then we found out like, okay, something did happen in the house. The owner said, you know, somebody did die here. This is how they died, blah, blah, blah. It was news reports of how the little girl died, stuff like that. So it was this one room in their house, like all the way in the back of their house. That was their little brother's room. But like, it was always so cold in his room and like the energy in there was just off. He didn't want to go in his room. When we did be in the room, like everybody would kind of be off a little bit. He would act really weird. Like the room itself was just kind of weird. Like the whole house could be all warm and happy and like just the vibe in that room was kind of off. So that was one thing. Um, it was some times where all the kids um, after we were like, oh, it's haunted, it's haunted. Um, it would be times where like all of us kids would be chilling in the living room and we would be like, oh, like if you're in here, like do this, do that. And stuff will actually happen. There will be times where we would just be chilling, watching TV, doors will slam, door handles, we will actually see the door handle like jiggling and moving, whether it be like the front door or like the closet door in the living room, like it would just be jiggling and it was crazy, like it was honestly scary, but like little stuff like that, I wasn't really scared of. I was kind of scared to actually sleep over her house. Um, and when I did, I kind of was like, had an eerie feeling in me. Um, like I remember it was this one night, we were in her room going to bed and the ice maker on their refrigerator did not work. Okay, look, ice maker did not work. It didn't make ice, it didn't make water. Like it just didn't work. We were chilling in her room and we start hearing stuff like slamming. And it did sound like it was ice dropping from out of the freezer. Me and Mona both looked at each other like, bro, like is that ice? Like, <laughs> you hear that? Like what is dropping on the floor? And she was like, it kind of sounds like the ice machine. And I was like, 
but it doesn't work like it doesn't make ice so we were like all right like it's the little girl like it has to be her playing with us trying to scare us and like i was never really well i was scared of the dark but at this moment in time, I was like in middle school. So I didn't sleep with like a nightlight or anything. But at her house, I like needed the TV to be on. Like I was just so scared to like be in the dark. Like I just had this weird feeling. Back to the, the ice machine. So we were sitting there like, bro, like it's the ice. Like it has to be the ice. So what we did was we convinced ourselves that we were like thugs. So we were like, all right, we both gonna go out there. We gonna see if there's ice on the floor. If there's ice on the floor, we go to my house. <laughs> Cause we live literally next door to each other. Each other. So I was like, all right, like if there's ice on the floor, we go into my house. All right, so what we did was we walked out, we walked down the hallway, walked into the kitchen, looked on the floor, and it was literally a puddle of water. Like the ice melted like this. And it was so crazy because you could literally hear, like, you know when you're, you're ice maker, you have a refrigerator that makes ice. You know how it sounds when it's like making the ice, like the process of it making. And then you hear like the ice drop into the little bucket or whatever. And what we heard was the ice rumbling, drop into the bucket and then ice coming out. Like, you know how it sounds when you, you put your water, your cup up to the machine and get ice. You know how loud it is? That's how it was dropping on the floor. So when we walked out and it was just a puddle of water, like how did the ice melt that fast? So that really scared us. We did end up going to my house. After like a lot of little things happened, like I remember this one time, I was walking to Mona's room and like her brother's room is before her room, right? So I walked past the room and the vacuum just cut on. Like it was like, vroom, vroom. and like I looked and I was like, hmm, like how did the vacuum just cut on and ain't nobody turned it on? And so that kind of scared me. So like, I just walked back. Like I didn't walk to her room. I like walked backwards and I like peeked in to see if it was going to do it again. And then it did cut on again. And I was like, can you stop? And then like it shut off. And then I kept walking and the vacuum cut on again. And this time it was like cut on for a long time. And I looked back in the room, like what is going on in the vacuum? I promise you guys was not plugged into the wall. The vacuum was not plugged into the wall. So it was just like the little things that would happen. Like, um, the little girl would do a lot of things. My cousin Dante actually seen, um, what he said, he seen the little girl up in like a corner in Mona's mom's room. And my man's literally had a panic attack. He started having an asthma attack. He was crying. And he like just ran home. Okay, like he sprinted. It didn't say a word to nobody. But then like when he got home and we was like, what's wrong? Like he was telling us that he started having like an asthma attack. And that was the day he ain't never stepped back into that house. So that was, that happened. It was just a lot of little stuff that was happening. And I was like, kind of like, whoa, this is kind of cool. Because I used to watch, um ghost adventures and stuff where like they go to haunted places and then like they film and all this other stuff so i was really into stuff like that but like actually being in a situation where it's like actually happened to you it's kind of scary <laughs> like mm, it's kind of scary so it would just be little stuff like that happening until this one time um mona was actually staying at my house like she actually moved in with us because she, it was just a lot of scary shit happening and she did not want to be at home anymore. So I don't know what day it was, but I know like once a week we would go to her house and get more clothes and stuff because we both went to the same school. So she would just stay at my house, you know, basically live there and we would just go to her house when we wanted something from her room or like when we wanted clothes for her and stuff like that. So it was one day that she needed more clothes for the week. So what we did was we went to her house you know got more clothes i was already nervous to be in her house because of the stuff that was happening and the stuff that this little girl was doing to people like she was actually doing stuff to people um but it was just stuff like that was happening that i was just like nah i'm not about it it would be some days where i kind of forgot that like they did have a ghost until a little bitch did something and if you called her a little b ooh. It's over. It's rocks for you. She would be mad. Like, she would do stuff on purpose. Like, talking about it? Talking about it? It's, it's kind of scaring me a little bit. Because, like, I hope you resting in peace now. Because she wasn't, she wasn't resting at all. She was angry. But it would just be little stuff. So, okay. 
We went to Mona's house to get clothes or whatever. We're all over her house chilling, talking to everybody because she has a lot of brothers. So we're all just chilling or whatever. Okay, listen. We walked into her room, put her old stuff down, getting her new stuff. Her bed was how she left her bed. Just like covers everywhere. Like it wasn't made up, okay? And she had a lot of stuffed animals that she had like on her floor. She never really had them on the bed. Never put on her bed. Even if she made up her bed, she never put it on there. And her bed was all, you know, messy and stuff. So we were just getting clothes or whatever. And then I think what it was while we walked out of her room was to go get ice cream. Um, so we got out of her room. We went into the kitchen or whatever we are talking. And then we are like, all right, like, let's get your stuff and leave. We walked into her room. And this is where, like, I don't know the feeling that I got. But it was like, no, like, this, this ain't safe. Like, you need Jesus. And well, we like went around the corner, about to walk into her door. The light was turned off. And we see like a figure, like you can tell it was like a little kid laying in her bed. So we thought it was her little brother. Until we realized her little brother ran past us in the hallway. So what she did was flip on the lights and we looked. I ran, okay, like it was like, nobody in the house was small enough to make that other than her little brother. And he wasn't in the bed. And you could tell like, like it was somebody laying in the bed. It was like a whole body laying in the bed. So we flipped on the lights and I ran to the living room. And she's like, please come in there with me. Like I need my clothes so we can go back to your house. Like we have school tomorrow. Like it was just like, please come with her. And she didn't want to go back in her room and grab her clothes on her own. And she was like, Deja, please, like, you're my best friend. Like, come on, we gotta be thugs. So I was like, all right, you know what? Like, I'll go to the door with you, but I'm not going in your room. So like, we walk back to the door. Ooh. And when I tell you, I never ran this fast in my entire life. Have I? No, I got chased by a dog before. But I ain't never ran this fast in my entire life. That was the day I could have been a track star. Like, I could have won the Olympics. How fast I ran out of that house. Listen, we turned around that corner to her door. The lights was already on. We hit that corner. I glanced to the bed. The bed is made up so smooth. Her teddy bear that she ain't never put on her bed was on the bed. Like the bed was made up to the point where, you know, like in the military where they say, I don't know if it's true, but they say like they bounce the coin on the bed to see if it come up, to see if your bed is made like that crisp. Her bed was made that crisp. And her teddy bears were on her bed. Bitch, I ran. I said, not today, Susan. I don't know who you are. I don't know what happened to you. I don't know why you not rested in peace. But you would never see me again. And I ran. I ran so fast. I ran out that front door so fast. I left the door wide open. I didn't even say nothing to Mona. I didn't say, bitch, let's go. Nothing. I ran. If you see a black person running, don't ask no questions. Don't turn around. Don't look behind you. Just run. Run. They're running from something. Just know if you want to live, run. Don't ask no questions. I ran and she ran right behind me. I got to my house panicking. I was like, did we just see what I think we just seen? And we just seen that at first it was somebody laying in her bed that we didn't know. Then not, it, it couldn't, like it, there is no way in hell somebody can make up that bed that fast. Because we were in the living room for, I promise you, like 10 seconds. 10 to 20 seconds we were in there, her trying to convince me to go back into her room. And then for them to be teddy bears, that, that she never put it on her bed to be on her bed, like all nice and neat. It scared the living sh out of me. Like it scared me to my core. I have never stepped foot back into that house. So they moved away from that house like probably like a year or so after that happened. But I ain't never stepped foot in that house. Mm -mm, nah, I can't even talk. I did not go back. I did not go back. I wasn't going back. And I ran to my house and I told my mom and I was panicking, I was sweating, I was hot and bothered and I never went back.
the house was actually haunted because after my best friend had moved away, it was some months had passed before um, this new family moved in. So it was this white family that moved in. Um, I think they had um, two older daughters and a little baby son or like his, his son was like a toddler and it was a husband and a wife. And one night we were all just chilling outside. Like the kids used to just be outside and their kids were kind of too young to hang out with all of us. So we were just chilling outside. Um, my auntie happened to be outside that night with us. And the man came out like mad. And he was like, um, he was talking to my auntie, but he was like, can you please like tell them if they're messing with the door handles, like if they're trying to get into our house, playing with our locks, can you please stop? Like we just moved here. We're not trying to have like a big commotion or whatever, because everybody on the block was really close to each other. So he was just like, you know, like we're all just trying to live here in peace and please just tell like the kids to stop playing with our doors and our handles and shit. And when he said that, I said, auntie, is that a girl? That little girl messing with him. My auntie was telling him like, well, you know, like none of the kids are messing with the handles. And he was like, it happens every night. Like there's somebody messing with the handles. It sounds like somebody's trying to get in. My wife and kids are scared and blah, blah, blah. And my auntie told him like, well, you know, like we did have our friends and family that lived in this house before you guys moved in. And um, she just gave him the rundown, like all the shit that used to happen in the house and that there is a spirit here. I don't know if it's good or bad. Most likely it's bad because she was like low key possessing people. But like, it's this bad spirit that lives here. And like, maybe you guys should sage the house, um, have the house blessed. But like, there is a spirit that lives in here. And he was telling my auntie like, um, well, you know what? Like my son's room so happened to be Mona's little brother's room. The one that was way in the back. that was always so cold and the vibe was weird. That's his son's, his younger son's room. And he said like the little boy was always so like eerie and antsy in there. Like he always cried for no reason. Like he just didn't want to be in there. And he was saying how that room is always the coldest in the house. And we we're like, yeah, like we think that's where the little girl died. So like my auntie was just telling him like, I, like, I don't know what to tell you. Maybe you should get the house blessed or something. But turns out the family did get the house blessed. I guess after he got his house blessed one day, came over to my house and was talking to my mom and my aunt and he was just telling them that like I did get my house blessed and ever since there like we ever since then we haven't heard anything happen like my son goes in his room fine like the rooms are all the same temperature um like the handles on the door we don't hear any of that anymore and my auntie was like yeah dude like it was a little girl living in your house but now I guess she's gone hopefully she's not here Hell no, bitch. Uh-uh, girl. You uh-uh. Ain't nobody better be up here with me. <laughs> but yeah, that is the story of the time I lived next door to a haunted house. Literally. If you enjoyed it, make sure you get a big thumbs up. Comment down below what you're going to be for Halloween. What am I going to be? I don't know. You just have to wait and see. Follow me on Instagram or whatever and you'll see first. Follow me on Snapchat and you will really see first because that's where I put everything really on Snapchat. Um, so yeah, just follow me on my other social media accounts. They're down below. Um, comment below your Halloween costume. And if you enjoyed it, give it a big thumbs up. I already said that. And if you made it this far, now you subscribe. Oh, why? Make sure you hit that subscribe button. And on that note, oh my God, bye.